This week marks one year since lawmakers and Governor Roy Cooper repealed the controversial bathroom bill known as House Bill 2. WNCT's Tamara Scott talked with one woman who was reflecting on how HB2 still impacts her and her LGBTQ community. And I just started transitioning when uh, House Bill 2 was first introduced and passed. I was terrified. HB2, better known as the bathroom bill, will likely be remembered for many as the reason for the loss of businesses, major sporting events and concerts in the state of North Carolina. But for Elizabeth Rankin, it's a time in history when everything changed for the worst. You had to consciously watch what you were eating and drinking so you didn't have to go to the bathroom. Yes, the terms clocking, uh, which means that they would realize that I was trans and I was worried somebody would do that and uh, they would uh, be hostile towards me. Um, and depending on who did that, it could be very dangerous for me. The 2016 law that required people to use bathrooms based on the gender on their birth certificate only lasted a year. It was, it was targeting people that weren't, that weren't conforming to, uh, to gender norms. For Rankin, who served in the military and is now a college student, the repeal and introduction of HB 142 in 2017 came as a brief relief. I was happy that it was repealed, but I was not happy that it had not been just completely repealed, as it should have. One year later, she still sees a lot of issues. What works in one area doesn't necessarily work in every area, and so by taking the power from the cities and counties to make those decisions, it's kind of defeating the purpose of having those governments. But she doesn't let that stop her. There might be times that it seems scary, and it, there are certainly times where I've been scared, but it will get better. In Greenville, Tamara Scott, 9 on your side.